chains were upon the guy, upon Daniel, as he was sitting there. And in that song, when it says, set me free, right? And when those chains are holding him down, and then Jesus comes and he takes them off, amen? He says, I don't want you to look at those chains anymore. I don't want you to hold on to those things anymore because they're not who you are. When we come to the altar and we lay it all down and we say, God, I give it to you, it is no longer for you to look at and to ponder on and say, I was a terrible person, amen, because all it is is now I am a child of God, amen. I am I'm in that loving grace that God has given me. I am beginning to wear the crown that God has put upon my head, and I am beginning to show that love and that grace and that compassion. That God is showing me. I don't have to live in that in that bondage anymore. The, the angels, they said, don't look back. That's all you got to do. Just keep looking forward. I, I swear I would have. I would have put it like out of it. I don't want to look back. I don't want to look back. <laughs> Amen. I would have, no, I would have, I would have taken any chances. I don't want like a piece of smoke to fly in front of me and me see them. No, 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 okay? Like, don't you do that to me. Like, I'd have been like, let me get out of there. And I want you to understand, though, that sometimes whenever we get in there and we give everything to God, amen, sometimes we have to hold on to a little bit. Amen, we think this is just too good to give up. Everything is bad except for that one thing, Right? It's usually bad except that one thing because nobody knows about that one thing. Amen. Hmm. Nobody knows I'm dealing with it. Nobody knows I'm struggling. So I'm just gonna hold on to it. Amen. Because if nobody else knows, amen, then what harm is it really doing? I want you to know that it'll hold you back. Amen. It doesn't take but that little pinch of the coattail from Satan to hold you back. Amen. And I want you to understand, because if we don't fully give God everything, then we're not giving God anything. Because he either wants all of us or none of us. You can't just have a little bit of God. Mm -mm. My God fills up everything. Every crack, every crevice, every bit of my soul. Amen. It's either full of them or it's empty. And I want you to understand that Lot, his wife, couldn't resist to turn back because... She still lived with that in her heart. She didn't want to let go, amen? And in Genesis chapter 19, verses 26, it says, But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Now, I want you to understand something about this. Lot was determined to live in the grace of God. I want you to understand that as Christians, we have to be determined that we are going to live in the grace of God because nothing that we do is worth losing the love of Christ. Lot knew that when he was walking that there were only two other people walking with him at one point and his wife wasn't there. It would have been real easy for him to turn around and say, hey, come on. And the same thing happened to him. But what happened? He says, I'm going to keep on going. I want you to understand that when you live in the grace of God, sometimes we're going to lose friends. Sometimes we're going to lose family. Sometimes we're going to lose loved ones because they're not going to understand what we're doing. They're not going to understand the peace that says, I can do anything. I can deal with any trouble that's going to come in my life. And it's a hard thing for people to understand. How are you happy in such a bad situation? Amen? All the time I talk about it, and I know, but when, when Mallory's mother passed away, amen, that time when everyone says, how are you guys doing okay? And then it's because we had the grace in our heart that says, I know that God has done a beautiful thing. Amen. I know she's not dealing with that. And I know that she's sitting up there at the feet of the Lord and the Savior that says, I know that she's okay. Amen. Because I have that grace in my heart. Amen. The word says there's a time to laugh and a time to cry. Amen. Doesn't mean things won't be sad, but I know that if I keep pushing forward, amen, my God's going to take care of me. Amen. So his wife, she turned into a pillar of salt and he says, I know she's not there, but I can't turn back now. Amen. I want you to understand that when you're when you're struggling in life and whenever you're, you're dealing with those things and you give them to Christ, amen, when your friends begin to leave you behind, I encourage you to not turn around because all you're doing is encouraging yourself to go back. Amen. His wife would have easily turned back and gone right back to that city, but instead she turned to a pillar of salt and she was there forever. Amen. 
until it rained. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. I had a quick on my head. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I want you to understand, though, Lot set that example that said, I shall serve my God. I shall do. Now, if you continue reading, you know Lot had problems. Amen. Amen. Who ain't got problems? Whew. Good. No liars in here. I was going to tell you that you had a problem if you raised your hand. Uh, <laughs> we've all got issues. We deal with things, amen? But it's about the intent of our heart of saying, I'm going to serve God. I know I have problems. I know I'm dealing with things. But the grace of God says just because I struggle with stuff doesn't mean I'm not his child. Doesn't mean that I can't deal with it. Every time I fall and I sin and I, I, I bow my head before God and I say, God... I need you. I want you guys to understand that for someone who stands up before you and preaches and teaches and leads young people, amen, every time I fall, I just want to just hit myself right in the face, amen, because I'm just like, I know that I know what to do and I know, but I know that I'm human and that I struggle, amen, and I'm not saying that it's not about when you sin, it's not about when we fall, it's about what we do. Amen. Do I embrace that grace that says, I know that I know that my God's there for me. I know that he's going to take care of for me. And I know that he's going to, that he's going to heal my land. So this morning, I want you guys to understand is that in this story, there's two things I want you to understand about. One, as a church, we need to begin to show that grace. We don't need to just live in it because grace is not just for us. It's for everyone. Amen. Someone think about who's the worst person you guys could think of. Not, not, let's not call names out in here, okay? Let's talk about in history. One of the worst people in this world we can think Hitler. of. Hitler. Hitler, okay? Anyone else? Anyone Stalin. got one? Huh? Stalin. 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 Oh, okay, yes, yeah. Any others? This other? Good. Um, <laughs> there's some bad people out there. Serial killers, right? Rapists, murderers. Someone, Hitler, murdered millions. Amen? Are these people not bad? Sure they are. Are these people not wicked? Sure they are. Amen? But I want you to understand, and we've talked about it before on Wednesday nights, they're still children of God. Just because we choose to live in sin, just because we choose to be bad, just because we choose to say, I'm going to murder millions of people, does not mean that we were not made in God's image. Each and every one of us deserve to know that we are children of God. And each and every one of us can earn that same grace. Amen. We can have that same favor. Amen. If we turn from our wicked ways. Do we have to answer for ourselves? Yes. Do we have to answer to the law of man about the sin that we commit? Yes. Amen. Do we still have to set, hold to the same accountability? Yes. But I want you to understand that there is not a single person in this world that if they go to God and they say, God, I'm sorry, I know I lived in sin. God, I know I've done wrong. But God, I want you to accept me as your child and I want to live my life for you, that God's not going to turn a single person away. Right. There's not a person in this world that God is ever going to leave, nor is he ever going to forsake. The young man in Florida that shot up those innocent children in that school that didn't deserve a thing, amen? He sits there in jail, and he sits there in misery of what he's done, or in whatever he is. But I want you to understand that if the grace of God went inside of that jail right now, and he got in there and he got a hold of that young man's life and said, you know what, you don't have to be this, you don't have to live in this, and you can begin to live for Christ, amen? God's not going to leave him for forsake thank him for what he has done. That's right. There's not a thing in this world that we can do that is going to turn us from the love of Christ. The only thing that stops us from feeling the love of Christ is us. That's right. That is it. That is the only thing that makes us not feel love is us. And we have to church, we have to get out of this mindset that says that the church is right and the world is wrong. Amen. That the, that the world, they can't accept this Christ, this, this love that Christ has shown us because they're not us. Amen. We need to begin to do as Abraham did, and we need to begin to intercede and proclaim the love of Christ to this world. Amen. Mm -hmm. We need to begin to intercede and say, God, I want you to heal that family. I want you to heal that loved one. I want you to heal this world. I want you to heal the wicked, the ones that say that I am not worth their time. Amen. Amen. We need to begin to intercede for the world that we live in because it's fallen apart, church. 
every day, and every moment that I live in this world, I just think, man, it's amazing 10 years ago, the difference. We're falling apart. Our children can't pray. They can't talk about God in school. Amen? But I know that if we begin to proclaim as Christians and as children of God and say that I will not stop until it is done, amen, that God is going to begin to heal this land. Amen? God is going to begin to be able to do a good thing. He's going to begin to use our children. But it starts with us. If Abraham had not gone before God, he just went to bed and said, God, I want you to go in there and I want you to look for your children first. Amen. Lot and his children and his wife would have been just sucked up into that, that fire and brimstone and the, the hatred of that world. But Abraham proclaimed to God that I know that there's somebody there that loves you. There is your children in there and I know that I know that they want to live for you. We have to begin, church, as Americans, as church, as children of Christ, to proclaim the word of God to the lost and dying world. We have to begin to stand on, that, on the word and say, God, I know that you're going to do something big. You can't pray enough, amen? That's right. And when you prayed enough, just pray a little more because it's not enough, amen? Mm -hmm. I know that my prayer life isn't where it be. I talk about it all the time. I know I need to pray more, amen? It's a struggle. Because sleep is good, amen? <clears throat> Sorry, y'all should have worn some boots today. I stepped all over y'all. Amen? <laughs> Sleeping as a bunch of kids I've ever spent in my life, my word. <laughs> like, can we go to sleep? Now, I'll make them stay up, just so that way they're not up all night. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but I know for me, right? I go to pray. I probably wait a little too late. <coughs> and I pray in bed. <laughs> I'm out. Amen. We need to set time aside for our lost loved ones. You wonder why that we can't just set the example and, and people just think, oh, we should do like they do. You think, oh, I don't know. I don't understand. We talked about it in Sunday school man, this morning. And I don't understand it sometimes why people don't just embrace the love of God when they know the love of God. Amen. And it's a struggle to watch. We need to pray more. We need to intercede for them more. And we need to stand on that rock and say, God, I'm not leaving, amen, until I know that I've done everything that I can do. Amen. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to pray until I know that they know that you love them. Right. I want you guys to understand there's a story that I love all the time. We talked about it a little while ago in uh, Sunday school last week. Paul and Silas, amen. What a great ministry they did. My favorite story, and everyone all, all knows it, I'm sure, they're sitting in jail. Now, there's a part of the story that I love, and I talked to Daniel about this a little bit last week. Grace is not just something that we tell people about, not just something that we feel, but it's also something that is um, contagious. Oh, it's so contagious. When you live in grace, people around you can't help. Amen. When they know about it, they can't help but to live in it and want to be a part of it. Amen. That's right. It's like a cold. <laughs> this kid's like, you better not talk about no cold, okay? <laughs> Amen. But it is, right? It's like you can't get rid of it. And I want you to understand, Paul and Silas, they were in that jail, right? And it says at that midnight hour, what'd they do? They were singing praises to God. Now, I don't believe they were saying, thank you, God, for letting me be in jail. They didn't make up new songs like that. Amen. I guarantee you. Amen. If Amazing Grace was around, I bet they'd have been singing it. Amen. But they were singing praise and worshiping their God in that jail cell. I want you to understand that those jails, they're made of brick and metal. So everything echoes. You know that the other prisoners could hear it. They were probably yelling, stop talking. Amen. It was midnight. Let's go to bed. Amen. Like we're in here being miserable, but making us worse. Amen. And I want you to understand something, though, that when they begin to sing that, amen, what happened? Amen, that earthquake came. That's right. And it says that every door, I want you to understand, it wasn't just Paul and Silas's door that was open, amen. It was every door. Every murderer, every, every thief that was in there, their door was open as well. And whenever they got up and they noticed the door was open, that, that, that guard, he wanted to destroy himself. He wanted to kill himself, thinking, what am I going to do? And he said, what? He says, have no fear. We are all here. 
There wasn't a thief. There wasn't a murderer. There wasn't a single person in that place that left that building because they were all there. And I want you to understand something. It's because the grace of God that lived through Paul and Silas that set the example. Because if it was me, amen, and I'm in jail for something I didn't do, and that, that door bust wide open, I'm out. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Like, just kidding. All right? All right? But if me, flesh, I'm going to run. Like, this is God telling me, Mm -hmm. Run fast as you can, like Usain Bolt style, amen? <laughs> Whew, I'll get tired, amen? <laughs> I wouldn't even make it to the door, but like, oh, God. <laughs> give me the strength. But I want you to understand something. It was the grace that when they stood up, the people knew that the grace of God had sent that sign that says, you're free, you're taken care of, don't worry about it. He says, we're all here. Not a single person left, because otherwise they wouldn't all be there, amen? Mm -hmm. It wasn't just Paul and Silas that were still there, it was them all. And it was because of the grace of God that lived in their heart that says, I'm going to serve God no matter what, that allowed those people to see that love and that trust in God, amen? I want you to understand that the trust in God does not come from reading the Bible alone, amen? It comes through the actions that we show, amen? I can't just say I trust God and then go hunker down when the lights get turned off, amen? Mm -hmm. I can't just say I trust God and then go hunker down when I lose my job or whenever I'm sitting there wondering, what am I going to eat? What am I going to do? My car's breaking down. It won't start, amen? We've all been there. But the trust of God goes whenever I say, God, I know you've got this. And then we begin to teach others to live in that grace when we say, I know that you're going to take care of it. I want you to understand that we live in a time where the hearts of people, the hearts of man, are becoming angry, bitter, hateful. Amen? I don't watch the news anymore. Because then it makes me angry, bitter, and hateful. Amen? <laughs> because that's what it's full of. There's not a person in this world, amen, it seems like these days we don't take action or accountability for our, our actions, amen. It's never our fault. It's never our problem, and I'm not trying to talk out about the world or anything like that, but I want you to understand that as Christians, we have to start standing up and saying, I understand that I've got issues, I understand I've got things, and it's my fault. What am I going to do about it? There's not a pastor in this world, amen, that can save you. There's not a preacher, there's not a teacher, there's not a man or a woman in this world that can save you from yourself. That's right. We as Christians need to begin to lead people into the right direction and then show them what it means to be saved. We can't just do it by saying, you need to get your life right. Mm -hmm. I can tell, listen, I tell the kids every day, amen. <laughs> <sighs> My throat gets sore. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I can tell every kid and I can tell every person in this world what they need to do to be saved and what they need to do. But if I don't live a life of righteousness, a life without trying to be a terrible person, amen, if I don't live a life that says that I have the love of God in my heart, amen, I'm doing nothing but speaking words. We as Christians need to begin to speak life into this world. We need to begin to speak that grace. We need to begin to stand on that rock and intercede for the, for the community that we live in. Amen. Ashland City has a problem. We all know what that problem is. Every county has a different problem. Amen. Nashville's got a big problem. Amen. Too many people moving there. We can fix that. Amen. Amen. We've all got problems. We've got things. But if we, as a community, as a church, are not standing there praying and saying, God, I need you to do something, and we don't begin to do that action, amen, we don't stand up and do something, I understand we're quiet. That's okay. Pray and find us. That's fine. But if we are not doing anything, amen, then we're not helping the situation, as they would say. Amen? Yeah. We need, as Christians, to be the warriors. I love that our group is called the warriors. Amen? Everybody are like, why? Because we need to get up and we need to begin to fight. We have to fight that fight to see our loved ones saved. We have to fight the fight to see us begin to go back into that time where it's okay for us to say something's right and wrong. Amen? And to show the love of Christ. 
So this morning, I challenge each and every one of you that, that the grace of God, we have to not only begin to intercede and, and say, God, I'm going to, to pray for my family. I'm going to pray for my loved ones. I'm going to pray for all those in this world and say, I need to see change. And I'm not going to stop until I see something happen. But we also need to begin to embrace that. Embrace that love and allow those that are in this world to begin to embrace and love and show them that God is God. We need to begin to allow them to understand it by living it. Just as Paul and Silas lived it inside that jail. Amen. There's not a single one of us that would have loved to have been there. I'll tell you right now, someone come in here and arrest me. Like, I'm not going to fight them, okay? I ain't going crazy, but I'm going to be like, for what? Like, amen. They said for preaching the word of God, okay? Amen. I'm not going to be happy about it, and I'm going to ask God a lot. Like, you could give me a heads up out of rent. Amen. They would have found me. Amen. I can hide. I can hide. Amen. You get this little thing anyway. I'm, I get it anything. Amen. God, give me a heads up. But sometimes it don't work that way. But I want you to understand something. That if we're living a life and we say, if you have to lay your head down at night and ask, what is wrong? Why do I feel this way? I want you to understand, one, you're not the only person that's ever felt like that. Amen? I stand before you being a person that felt that way for a long time. There's many in here who have. But if you're wanting, and you're feeling, and you're searching for something, amen, and you're wondering what's next, amen, give it to God. Let that grace of God just be abundant. Let that grace of God tell you that you are loved, that you are something, you are worth it. Because every single Christian, every single child of God, whether they are, whether they serve God or not yet, amen, God loves each and every one of them, That's right. no matter what. We have to get out of that worldly mindset that says, okay, we're, we're good, we're Christians, we live our life right, amen, because that's not the way it works. God loves them all. Mm -hmm. All of our problems, he can deal with them, amen. Some of us got some strange problems. I got strange problems, Amen. I'm just strange, but that's okay. Hey. <laughs> but I want you to understand something, though. Is that that love of God, that grace, amen, it says that I can laugh, I can love, and I can be happy. Amen? Man, if you would stand with me this morning. Mallory begins to play and she begins to sing, amen. I want you guys to really think about this message. This message is just as much for me as it is for anybody else, amen. It's not about Sodom and Gomorrah. It's not about the, the issues that they, they came with. Because it's not about the issues that you have in your life. It's about allowing God to be God in your life. It's about when we come to this altar and we pray, we're not praying just a, a prayer that says, Oh God, I want you to get rid of it and I want you to make me feel good for now until I get home, amen? And then I want you to leave me alone. Amen? I want every bit of me to be transparent with God. And I want Him to take everything that I deal with and I want Him to throw it as far as the east is from the west as the Word says He will. God, I want everything to be about you. I want that grace. I want that when I'm running away from that life, that misery as they did in Sodom and Gomorrah, when I'm running away and, I'm, and my heart is going into the direction that you're going, I don't want it to look back anymore. Amen? I don't want it to look at those things that, that filled me, that I thought were, were making me happy, because I know that they're not going to make me happy. They're just going to make me feel miserable. I don't want to think that every time something goes wrong, I have to pick up that bottle or I have to pick up that, that thing that I put into my life that I know that is holding me back and think that that's going to fix it. Because every time I do, I feel worse than when I started. That was the way I was. I felt like every time that I got angry, it was going to make things better. Because <laughs> I could make them feel worse than they make me feel by the time it was done, I would lay there. Sometimes I would just cry myself to sleep because that, who wants to be that? 
I want you to understand this morning that this message is, is more about the things that I have seen and dealt with in my life. I don't want anyone to ever have to deal with. And I know there are some that deal with it on a daily basis. But if you want a change, if you want your life to be something different, if you don't want to deal with those things anymore this morning, I challenge you to give it to God. I challenge you to not leave this church the same way you came in. And when you come up to pray, amen, you tell God that today is the day that I'm going to be different. And I'm not just talking about in church, I'm talking about my life. I don't want people to see me, I don't want people to hear me the same. I want to be different. Today is the day of change. Today is the day of salvation. Because this is the day the Lord has made. Amen? So this morning, if you have something you want to pray about, the altars are open. If you want to pray before God, amen? These altars are open for each and every one of us. And so as she prays, I just want you to begin. We should examine our life. And if you're good, let's examine those around us. And let's begin to pray for them as well. Because they need us more than we probably need ourselves.